Derrick Henry has become one of the best running backs in the NFL and could go down as one of the best running backs to ever play the game of football when it's all said and done. You may know about him from the Titans, but do you know how he became the superstar he is today? In today's video, we'll take a look back at his journey to the NFL, his time at Alabama, and back before he was ever a big time recruit. If you clicked on this video, I know you're a football fan, so why not take a quick moment to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 4,000 subscribers by the end of August. I know you won't regret it. If you have an idea about who I should do next, drop it down in the comment section below. And now let's get started with the rise of Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is the all-time leader in rushing yards for any high school running back ever, but how did he get to that point? Well, it starts out in a suburb of Jacksonville called Yulee, Florida. His father was absent for most of Derrick's childhood and was in and out of prison close to 20 times. Because his mom had to work so much, Derrick spent a ton of time with his grandparents and they provided a nice family for him to live with. He felt safe and secure there and finally got the stability he needed to become successful. This kid had all the physical tools to be a beast and he took up the running back position when he got to high school. He ran for 2,465 yards and 26 touchdowns as a true freshman. That's truly unbelievable. He ran for more yards as a true freshman than most kids run in their entire football careers. He didn't slow down either as he ran for 2,788 yards and 38 touchdowns as a sophomore and it looked like he turned the sliders all the way up on NCAA 14. By this point, Derek was a big time recruit already and actually decided to commit to Georgia. He joined his hometown buddies of Bryce Ramsey, Boom Williams, and Tramel Terry, and they all committed to Georgia, but that didn't end up lasting long after he thought about his decision more. His numbers dropped by 100 yards and two touchdowns as a junior, but this kid was already on track to be the best running back in high school football history. What Derek was about to do as a senior was truly unbelievable. He ran for a state record 510 yards in one game and averaged 9.2 yards per carry as a senior. He would go on to rush for 4,261 yards and 55 touchdowns. These were both state records and now Henry was the best running back in high school football history. When it came to recruiting, obviously Derek was going to be able to go to any school he wanted to and every coach in the country wanted him. His final three schools ended up being Georgia, Tennessee, and Alabama. He ultimately wanted to be the best player he could be make it to the NFL, played for the best coaches, and maybe win some championships along the way, so he committed to Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. According to 24-7 Sports, Henry was a five-star recruit, the number one athlete, and the 13th best player in the class of 2013. Alabama landed a steal at running back, and he would not let them down. Derek would go into the Alabama system, competing with TJ Yeldon and Kenyon Drake for carries, and he would settle into his role as the third back on the team. Henry struggled his freshman year, especially his first few games. He seemed to be overthinking things too much and wasn't running the ball very well. That was until the Arkansas game at least. Derek broke out for an 80 yard touchdown and finished the game with 111 yards rushing. He followed it up with 100 yards and a touchdown against Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl. For the Tide, they would end up going 11-1 during the regular season with their only loss coming by way of Chris Davis in the Miracle Kick 6. They'd end up playing in the Sugar Bowl, but they lost to Oklahoma as I said earlier. Derek wasn't expected to be a superstar early on, but he finished with 382 yards and 3 touchdowns as a freshman. Going into 2014, Henry was going to be splitting carries with TJ Yeldon, but he would eventually become the go-to guy. He opened up the year with 113 yards and a touchdown in a thrilling Chick-fil-A kickoff win against West Virginia, and the Tide would beat Southern Miss and Florida Atlantic to start out 3-0. Against Florida, Henry ran for 111 yards and a touchdown in their blowout win. He kind of cooled off for the rest of the season, as he never rushed for more than 100 yards in a game the rest of the regular season. To this point, the Tide were led by Blake Sims, and they had beaten number 21 Texas A&M, number 1 Mississippi State, number 15 Auburn, and number 16 LSU on the year. They ended up going 11-1 after they lost to Bo Wallace and Ole Miss, but they were headed to Atlanta and were in prime position to make the inaugural college football playoff. Their next opponent was the number 16 Missouri Tigers, my school, and of course, that's when Derrick Henry decided it was time for him to break out again. In the Tides' blowout win, Henry ran for 141 yards and two touchdowns and shredded Missouri's really good defense. Alabama would go on to make the college football playoff, and they lost an absolute thriller to Ezekiel Elliott's Ohio State Buckeyes, 42-35. In that game, Derrick ran for 95 yards and a touchdown, but it still wasn't enough. Henry would go on to lead the Tide in rushing in 2014 with 990 yards and 11 touchdowns, while averaging 7.3 yards per carry. Going into 2015, Yeldon was gone, so Henry was going to be the full-time starter, but it wasn't exactly going to be easy. Kenyon Drake was still good, 
Damian Harris would end up emerging, and they brought in five-star recruit Bo Scarborough to create more competition. Jake Coker was the quarterback, Calvin Ridley was the star receiver, and OJ Howard had become a beast at tight end. The Tide were expected to get to the playoff, and Henry was poised to break out, and that's exactly what he did. In their season opener against Wisconsin, he rushed for 147 yards and three touchdowns in his coming out party. He followed it up with three more touchdowns against Middle Tennessee and 127 yards in their weird home loss to Ole Miss. Bama would once again need to get themselves back together or they would potentially miss out on the playoff. I think it's safe to say Derek took it upon himself to make that happen. He would go on an absolute tear, starting with 148 yards in their win over number 8 Georgia, 236 yards against number 9 Texas A&M, 210 yards and 3 touchdowns against number 10 LSU, 204 yards against number 17 Mississippi State, and 271 yards on the road against their arch rival Auburn. He carried the tie to both an 11-1 record and the SEC Championship game, and he was now the frontrunner to win the Heisman Trophy. He would go on to rush for 189 yards against Florida in the SEC Championship game, and Bama was headed right back to the playoff. They got the two seed and were matched up against number 3 Michigan State in the first round. Henry would go on to go for 75 yards and two touchdowns in their blowout win over the Spartans. Derek solidified his Heisman win with 158 yards and three touchdowns in their national championship win against Clemson. After rushing for an SEC record 2,219 yards and 28 touchdowns and leading his team to the title game, Derek Henry was named the Heisman Trophy winner for the 2015 season and became a consensus first team All-American. As I said earlier, Henry broke the SEC record for rushing yards in a season Plus, we'll go down as the best running back statistically in Alabama football history. So now it's time for him to go to the NFL. Despite literally doing everything imaginable, scouts were concerned about him being the workhorse at Bama and his slow acceleration rate as he was pegged the second best running back behind Ohio State's Ezekiel Elliott. He ended up being the second running back taken, but he would fall to the second round as he was drafted to be the franchise running back for the Tennessee Titans. He came into the Titans organization as the backup running back to DeMarco Murray but he was still expected to play a lot. His rookie year actually got off to a pretty slow start, but he eventually scored his first touchdown week 8 against the Jacksonville Jaguars. His best game of the season would come on the road against the Chiefs, where he'd go for 60 yards and 2 touchdowns. Henry would finish 6th amongst rookies with 490 yards and 5 touchdowns. Derek did okay his rookie year, but were the scouts maybe right? That was the question he was going to have to answer going into his second year in the NFL. He would once again split carries with DeMarco Murray in 2016, but he needed to show more promise. He ran for 92 yards in the touchdown week 2 against the Jags, and then had a career best game against the Colts with 131 yards and a 72 yard touchdown. He cooled off once again all the way until week 13, where he went for 109 yards and a game winning 75 yard touchdown against the Texans. The Titans would end up getting a wild card spot in 2017, and he would go off in the first round with 156 yards and a touchdown in their win over the Chiefs. They would end up losing to the Patriots the next week, but the Titans and Henry had finally begun to show some promise. On the year, he improved his rushing yards to 744, and he also scored 5 touchdowns. But more importantly, we finally saw some flash from him. Going into 2018, Henry was supposed to break out, but they brought in Deion Lewis to try and help manage his load. Things really did not go well for Henry. After a decent first 3 weeks, he had an abysmal stretch. Weeks 4 through 13 were especially brutal as he only averaged 37 yards a game and never went for more than 60 yards. What the heck was going on with Henry? Apparently Derek had been in his head, but now he was ready to restart and compete. It all started when he took a run 98 yards for a touchdown and finished the game with 238 yards and 4 touchdowns. He became the 9th player in NFL history to go for 4 touchdowns and 200 yards in a game and tied the record for longest rush. He would then go for 170 yards and 2 touchdowns against the Giants combined for 177 yards and a touchdown week 15 and 16. Because of that, he was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Month, and Henry had officially saved his career. Because they did lose to the Colts, they didn't end up making the playoffs, but Henry seemingly saved his career, and that's all that really mattered. He finished the year with 1,059 yards and 12 touchdowns, while being ranked the 99th best player in the NFL. Going into 2019, Henry was once again poised to break out even more, and that's what he did. He would go on to run for 1,540 yards in only 15 weeks with a league-leading 16 rushing touchdowns. He went for over 100 yards 8 times in 2019, including 182 yards in their win over the Patriots and 195 yards in their incredible road win against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. The Titans didn't have enough to make it all the way to the Super Bowl, but Henry had a spectacular season and truly went from a borderline bust to a superstar in a little over a year.
Recently, Derek and the Titans finally agreed to a contract, and the Titans look like they're going to be a force in the 2020 NFL season. I know I cut his 2019 campaign a little short, but most of you know about this by now, and I wanted to focus on his career before this season because many of you may not know about his past. It's truly crazy that Henry is the best high school running back of all time, had one of the best college football rushing seasons ever, and it now looks like he could go down as one of the best running backs in NFL history. I loved watching Derrick Henry in college, and I am happy that he is doing well for the Titans now. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and, if you, and I would really appreciate it if you would take a quick moment to smash that like button, let me know who I should do next, and share this video with all your football loving friends. You guys are truly the best fans out there, and I really need your help to reach 4,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you are still here, check out my video about the rise of AJ Brown and all my other NFL player story videos. Until next time though, peace.